All right, folks, good morning. This is our new kind of section or chapter we're calling, Do You Have Cell Service? And of course, that silly, ridiculous name indicates that we are going to be investigating cells, which we kind of already have been because a lot of the things uh, about our body and you know thinking about what affects our health really has to do with the cells. Um, everything that is operating in our bodies is the work of all of our hundreds of trillions of cells, all having specific functions to keep us safe, keep us healthy, and things in the environment sometimes can hurt our cells. So we'll, we'll really look and spend a lot of time looking at how cells are made, they're designed, uh, comparing different types of cells, and then really spending the most amount of time looking at our own bodies, how our own cells are working, and what are the important parts of cells uh, moving forward in our biology class. Here is slide one, and for slide one, of course, we need to get our problems, and these are the guiding questions that lead us through the entire chapter, just as always. And we have problem number one is new. It says, why are proteins so important to cell? And then number two and three should look familiar. We're going to continue with number two and three, just like we did in the last um, chapter called, what am I? Or what have I become? So these are still important, and we'll still continue using them, so we better understand a lot of important issues in our life and our experiences. All right, but let's write this down, and then, of course, you should decorate them, break out some markers, anything that draws attention to them. Remember, these, sh these should stand out compared to the rest of the notes. So decorate it. Make sure you write them completely, and I would recommend writing them larger than usual, too, just, again, so they pop out and they stand out. You have to decide what page this is going to go on. So whatever the last place you left off on, the first fresh sheet there, you would be starting this section called Do You Have Cell Service? You'd make sure your table of contents has this in there uh, and the correct page that you're placing it. And if you haven't yet, you should be making a pocket for anything that we do that we're going to be placing in our notebooks for this, for this chapter. So a pocket set up your table of contents and make sure you put the right page and then go ahead and write slide one problems one through three all right we're gonna move through these other slides a little faster just because we've already dealt with them we've learned that acidity can in fact impact the survival and health of organisms we've studied the liver we've learned that the liver removes toxic uh, chemicals that can be found in the body such as hydrogen peroxide we know that the liver contains, or the liver cells contain, a special enzyme called catalase. And this enzyme catalase takes hydrogen peroxide, this toxic substance in the body, and assists in a reaction that makes water and oxygen, things that are non-harmful or helpful to your body. We had our lab safety rules. We learned these are all kind of notes regarding our pH and enzyme lab. They should look familiar. We've performed a lot of these activities, a lot of work. We didn't study, but this is uh, covering what can create a low pH or a change of pH in your body. These are interesting ones all the way. So we studied how pH affects our the liver and the enzyme catalase. And these are all different reasons why the body could actually have a pH issue which would prevent enzymes like catalase from doing their job, from obesity to alcohol use. All of those can actually create a lower pH in your body or a acidic environment. We have a lot of videos to help us. Uh, we will potentially eventually watch about how enzymes and pH uh, interact and how pH, what really is it doing, uh, why pH has an impact on the enzymes. These, let's see here, keep on moving. Here we go, slide 19. Slide 19 is kind of our first activity introduction to the slide, so it says, in your notebook, observe and hypothesize the identity of the object. So what do you think this might be? Or better yet, what kind of cell do you think it might be? So go ahead and give your reason and give a little bit of evidence to indicate why you think it might be a cell or what type of cell. 
Number two says, this one is dyed with a variety of glowing pigments. That's this right here. With each attaching to specific regions. So the different colors are different pigments that intentionally stain different parts of this. It says, based on your observations, just what you've looked at, identify how a stain can help you learn about a cell. So if each pigment stains a particular part of a cell, why do scientists use it? Why do you think they do it? So you're just going to conjure up uh, a reason why you think they might stain or use pigments on cells, especially different pigments for different areas. Why do you think? This is what a cell looks like when it's not been stained. And you can see that it's rather transparent. So the difference between this and this is quite clear. So compare these and think what would uh, be beneficial by staining it like you see here. And then that can be your answer for number two of why they stain it. Both of these videos are terrific and they introduce us to the world of cells. And they talk a lot of interesting ideas about how cells uh, keep us alive and what they have to go through in order to survive inside us. All right, slide 20 is definitely a note-taking opportunity. We see the pink box, so make sure you get this down. It says 100 trillion atoms equal a single cell. About 1 times 10 to the 14 cells equals an adult body. That means it takes hundreds of trillions of atoms to make one cell. And then if you think about it, even though it takes that many atoms to make one cell, our body's actually made up of 1 times 10 to the 14 cells. That's a lot of atoms to make a lot of cells. It says, do the math. It says, is there the same number of atoms in, the cell, in a cell as cells in the body? So to complete this, you have to think about it. 1 times 10 to the 14 is this number. So this is the scientific way. This right here is the scientific way, or 1 times 10 to the 14 is the scientific way of representing very big numbers. You can see that... It's much easier to write 1 times 10 to the 14 than it is to write 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, etc., right? But what is this number? See if you can figure out what it is and see if it's the same as this right here. Let's see what you get, okay? If it has three zeros, it's 1,000. If it has six, what is it? If it has nine zeros, what number is this? Just keep going and see if this is this, if 100 trillion atoms is the same as the number of cells so it takes 100 trillion atoms to make a single cell. Is it the same number of cells to make an adult body? All right, then it says, watch website simulation and rank four items from smallest to biggest. So let's check this out. Website simulation. All right, so I got to rank, my job is based on slide 20, I got to rank some items or some materials from smallest to biggest. And we're supposed to use a website. So what you do is you Google Learn Genetic Scale. And then you get right here. You just click on the result. And that'll take you to this right here. To do the activity, and I don't want to ruin any of the fun, is you grab this cursor and you move. And you'll see it starts to move and zoom in. So zoom this in to the very bottom. And Afterwards, once you learn about some of the items, what I'd like you to do is make a list from the tiniest things. The tiniest things would be found on the right side. And you just scroll it across, right? So, boom, they get really far over, and then you can move back, right? So the further to the left you are, the bigger the items are, like a coffee bean. You can see with your own eye. And the things on the right side are the smaller things. So as you go across from left to right, you want to start showing a list. You want to create a list in your notebook from smallest to biggest. Again, you do that, and you get to this website just by Googling Learn Genetic Scale and clicking here. That'll take you right there, all right? And then you just set it up. You go across the cursor, and you start identifying things from smallest to largest. But remember, as you zoom in, you're looking at smaller and smaller things. Important to note, we've been studying atoms and molecules, and now we're really spending a lot of time thinking about this, cells, tissue, and organs. And when you combine all those in specific ways, you get systems and then the overall organism. Like the spider, Anderson Silva here, which you may or may not know. Mystery man. Slide 21. Definition is membrane, a thin structure that separates two areas with fluid. So basically, membrane means a boundary. It's something that divides one place to, from another. 
And cells have this. Cells are coated in a barrier that protects the inside from the outside. But let's think about this. Let's spend a moment and think about examples of membranes in our own life. But before we do, of course, make sure you finish this part too. It says made up of lipids. So it's made up of lipids, a specific type of polymer that we're now going to spend more time learning about. So last chapter we learned a little bit about pro, uh, polymers called proteins. We're going to continue talking about proteins, but today and in this particular chapter, we're going to spend a little more time also learning about lipids. And they have a very specific important function in creating the membranes or the divisions within our cells. So we have an image that says A, B, and C. It says determine the number of membranes in each image. So A, you're just estimating here. Remember, estimating means just guessing. So check this cell out. And how many membranes do you think it has? Then you have a boba drink. And that includes the cup, straw, and everything therein inside the cup. How many membranes do you think are going on inside a boba drink? And if you're not familiar with boba, Google it. I Googled it. Just like you can do. So Google Boba and figure out and then use this. There's some different pictures so you can look up a description of the product. Um, I went straight to images, but you can just go to all. And then, of course, find a bunch of stores and you can probably find a Wikipedia article. Bubble tea, there you go. To help you decide how many membranes might be in or estimated to be in a Boba drink. And then you have this girl right here getting ready to jump in the ocean. And she's got a wetsuit on. She also has her body herself, right? So how many membranes do you think are represented in this picture here? Paying special attention to the function of a wetsuit, of course. But estimate. All right, let's move forward. We have slide 22 shows how you can stain the outside cell membrane of a cell. And this is a real cell. Now it might be in the process of cell division. It appears it might have two nuclei here, but it's a reminder also that lipids are what creates this outer cell membrane, and it's stained green. So this outside green represents the lipids that make the outer coating or outer membrane of a cell. And here's a picture of a the possible structure of a lipid that makes our cell membranes. And, of course, the membrane is protection. It's a boundary or protection that manages the flow of molecules in and out of the cell. Because the cell, just like our bodies, has to control what goes in and out. So does a cell, of course. 23, we have another staining of another type of cell. You can see the nucleus right here, which is coated in a membrane, is stained or dyed a nice pink color. We have another cell here. Now, you'll notice these, diff these look different because it's different computers or specialized microscopes that are viewing each. So the technology we use now to study cells, whether, whether we're studying their surface or looking internally, um, and also using the different dyes and stains, the pigments we have, we can really look at different parts of the cell and look at them in a way that we normally couldn't in a traditional microscope. This right here is a special cell called a neuron, and you can see it's really just showing the surface of the neuron or the brain cell. And it's also showing you how they have these long branching extensions that overlap with others. So this whole net right here is how our brain is set up, where you have different brain cells making contact and communicating with other brain cells. It allows us to think and do everything we do. I recommend you watching this video so you can get a better sense of cells and how technology is being used to study them. All right, folks, I'm going to stop right there, and we'll start up on slide 25 in our next video. Have a great day, and eat some food.